my name is Sharon Fitzpatrick and welcome to my YouTube channel Lifestyle with Sharon. Today I'm going to be making you one of my favourites which I love is homemade lasagna. You just can't beat a homemade version of it. it. Tastes really really yummy. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So if you do like it please do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media so you can tell everyone about it. It's a lovely recipe and if you want to just drop um, a little comment and just say hello I'd love to hear from you and if you haven't done so already do subscribe to the channel it's free of charge and if you hit that notification bell it just gives you that gentle reminder of when the videos come out okay so enjoy today I'm going to be using one of the onions I've grown in the garden these are so easy to grow you can grow them in pots so you don't have to have a, a massive garden or anything once you pick them out of the garden, as long as you dry them out, they will last for a good six months. So first of all, we're going to chop up some onions and as usual, put your tea towel underneath your chopping board to stop it moving around. Good sharp knife and cut your onion in half. Right, so just to dice them, as usual, go across that way, not cutting the end where the root is. Turn it around and just chop it down ways, keeping your fingers bent so you don't cut yourself. And then you're just left with the root at the end. So we're just going to get some garlic. So to make it easier to peel, just put your, the flat of your knife on it. Give it a bit of a bang with your hand. So you'll be able to easily peel the, the garlic once you've given it a little bit of a bang on the knife. So just cut the two ends off. And then you can either put it in a garlic crusher or just chop it manually with a knife like this. Okay, and once you've roughly chopped them, you can just hold your knife like that and just chop up and down to kind of get the last little bits. Right, when you finish chopping any of your vegetables, the temptation is to usually scrape all the vegetables to one side. But when you're scraping that sharp bit of your knife along the breadboard, you're actually blunting the knife. And then you just turn your knife upside down and you just push along with your knife like that, whatever vegetables you've got on your board. So I'm just going to take off some fresh basil leaves and as you pick the leaves, that's when you smell it. There is something nice and special about fresh basil leaves. Gather it all together, bunch it all together, making sure your fingers are bent so you don't cut yourself, and you just chop away roughly at the basil. Right, we just melted some butter in the pan here to make our tomato sauce. Right, let's just add the onions. We'll add some carrots, and I'll put in the description below what the ingredients are. Um, the amounts that you have to put in and they'll also be on the website too right, you're going to put some salt some pepper and so then we just put the lid on and let this sweat for five or ten minutes right so we'll take the lid off and you can see how nice this is looking now if you find that it's getting a bit dry just add a little bit of olive oil about a tablespoon of olive oil to it and if you didn't want to use butter, then just use all olive oil. Use all olive oil. That's a bit of a mouthful. Right, now we're just going to add some tinned chopped tomato. We want some thyme. Some oregano. And I'm going to put the dry basil into the sauce and use the fresh basil for the mince. So we want some basil. some paprika and some parsley and then we'll put a couple of bay leaves in and then just give this a good stir and then you basically want to have this on a low to medium heat for a good half an hour just to let it all absorb into each other all the lovely flavours so half an hour to an hour with the lid on so into your pan with the hot oil you just add some onions and some carrots you want to add some seasoning so we're going to add some salt some pepper we'll add some paprika oregano and we'll add some thyme so we'll put the lid on this and let it sweat for about five minutes so we'll just take the lid off and see how lovely this is looking mm, the smell is lovely So now we're just going to add our garlic and we're going to add our mince. So you want to put your lid back on and just give it an occasional stir 
and let this cook away for about half an hour. So I'll just show you how the sauce is doing. Because you do have to just keep stirring this occasionally, otherwise it could stick to the bottom. So just every five or ten minutes, just give it a little bit of a stir. And it's gone kind of darker in colour. And it's looking really nice. So this is cooking away while your mince is cooking. Okay, so we'll just have a look at the mince here. And just at the end of the cooking, you want to just add your fresh basil at that point. Now, this is our sauce. Now, you can just leave it that if you like, or you can liquidise it or mash it with a potato masher. We'll just take the bay leaves out, though, because they can be a bit hard. So I'm just going to pour this tomato sauce into a tall jug. I'm going to get one of these hand blenders and just liquidise it. Right, now for the white sauce or the cheese sauce whichever you decide to do um, I'm just using the same wooden spoon that I use the tomato sauce it doesn't matter um, so I just melt this butter then you add some flour and you stir in this flour so it gets all absorbed into the butter and at this stage it's called a roux so it'll be a nice thick mixture and you want to cook this for about a minute continuously stirring when you're making small amounts it doesn't take long when you make larger amounts it might take a bit longer to cook this kind of sauce but it's so well worth it because the taste is wonderful right so now we're going to just add a small amount don't add too much a small amount of milk keep stirring and it will get nice and thick again but just keep stirring then once that gets nice and thick again you add a little bit more and you just keep doing this process you won't get lumps if you keep stirring and you're just adding the small amounts of milk at a time Looks a bit strange, but it'll all be lovely when you finish it. Now, as you can see, kind of halfway through doing this, it is still thick, but the consistency has changed. And what you want to do is give this a really good beating. Get a little bit of elbow grease in there and beat around with this. And then, of course, keep adding your milk. Just takes a bit of practice, but you'll get used to it. But once you can do your own made sauce, it really is lovely. A bit of exercise for your arms as well. <laughs> you don't have to be beating it this much, but... If you do, it just gives a nicer sauce. See how it's changing? And just be careful when you first add your milk in, just to kind of go slowly, because otherwise you could splash the milk everywhere. So I'll show you when it's finished. Right, so this is our delicious white sauce. And you can see that's the kind of consistency that you want it. You don't want it too thick, because when you add a bit of cheese, it gets a bit thicker. So once you've made your white sauce, you want to add a little bit of nutmeg. And then perhaps a little bit of pepper. So this is your pepper. And that's your beautiful sauce. So we're going to turn the heat off now. And we're going to grate some cheese. Okay, and then once this is cooked, you just pour, and your sauce is liquidised, you just pour that into your mince mixture. It's a delicious homemade tomato sauce. So that's that bit ready. So now we're going to go back to our white sauce now you can just have this sauce like this you don't have to add cheese to, onto it and then you could just add cheese at the top of the lasagna but I love to put a bit of cheese into it it just gives it more flavor so the sauce has cooled down for 10 minutes then we add the cheese you don't add it in straight away otherwise it could curdle and by leaving it to cool for 10 minutes that stops that from happening so most of it will melt because it is still warm but it won't completely melt. So once it's kind of dissolved as much as it can be, you can turn your heat on again for a few minutes just to completely melt the cheese. If you find the mixture is too thick at this stage, just add a little bit of milk to it. Now we're just going to layer up our lasagna. So we're going to get some of our mince to start with. Put it in a nice deep dish. It doesn't matter what shape it is, as long as it's nice and deep. And you just want a good few layers. So you want a nice thin layer of mince. And just spread it around to cover all the area. And on top of that, you want to put some lasagna sheets and just break them up to fit. And then you want to pour, I put it, the sauce into a jug. So you just want to pour a bit onto the, the sheet of lasagna. And just spread it out with a spoon. You want to make sure this is well covered because if you don't, then sometimes the lasagna won't cook properly. So you want a decent amount of sauce. So again, another layer of mince. The deeper your dish, the better, because then you can have several layers. 
And that sauce, the tomato sauce and the cheese sauce together along with the pasta is just yummy. Or lasagna sheets. It doesn't matter if you double it over a bit. Now your sauce. That sauce looks lovely, doesn't it? Wait till you taste it. If you want to add some comments in, do say hello to me. And in another video, I'll show you how to make a vegetarian lasagna. But I love both. I love the beef one and the vegetarian one. So I'm trying to get as many layers as possible. It's a lovely deep dish, this one. Makes it nice to do lots of layers. If you can only do three, you only do three. But if you can do four, then great. So again, just make sure that sauce is covering all the pasta. You don't want any hard bits of pasta. So I'd say we'll be able to do one more layer. Now, of course, depending on what size your dish is, depends on how much mince and everything you're going to use. But it's better to make a bit too much mince rather than not enough. And you can always just have it the following day for spaghetti bolognese. Right, now, especially this last layer of pasta, you want to make sure it's completely covered. So make sure you go right to the edge. You want a decent layer of the sauce on the top. And if you've got any sauce left over, you can actually freeze it and bring it out as and when you need it. And you can have it with um, macaroni pasta, which I've got a, a video for that. So I can show you that and I can put the link down below. All right, so this is it out the oven. So just to test to make sure, for your own peace of mind, go in the middle with a sharp knife and just make sure that the pasta is cooked. But it should be as long as you keep it in the oven for a nice low heat. I cooked this on gas mark four for about 45 minutes. So as you can see, it's bubbling away there, so it's piping hot. So we'll let this cool for maybe 15, 20 minutes before I actually try and dish it out. In the meantime, I'm just gonna cut around the edge so it just makes it easier for dishing out. All right, so now we're just going to dish this out. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And this smell is lovely, and I'm so looking forward to eating this. Now, you can have it on its own, or you can have it with chips. You can have it with homemade coleslaw, which I'll put the link below. Or you can serve it up with some vegetables. 